This year is produced by Torah Info. Hi everyone, welcome back to another Torah Info video and another Torah Info event. This event, um, a lot of you think this event uh, is uh, we dedicated. It's called the Inspirational Share Night with um, uh, speakers, um, our dear speaker of a prayer. Um, our new Tonfo speaker, our dear Rabbi Robert Prager. Uh, then we have followed by, by me, Akustin Rubinov, second speaker, followed by Daniel Yusupov, and followed by my last and my least speaker, Elon Davidov. This speaker is also, as we all know, is dedicated for Lil Nushmat, uh, Hagaon Harab, Roshmol Yehuda, uh, Roshmol Yehuda Levin. Zachary Tiracha, Shigar Alian Shamai. This show is again for him, and the target of this event. We like to say, obviously, obviously, everybody for coming, but the topic of this event will be mostly the topic of Torah. And our dear Rabbi Bilashon would like to say something about Shalei Shuva, also connect the topic of Torah. So as of now, um, everyone, please uh, give your undivided attention to our dear speaker, Rabbi Prager. Please begin. Thank you, Yossian. <clears throat> you asked me to say some Libre Hesped. Uh, I, I didn't feel I'm not. I can't say that I, I am a Talmud of uh, Rabbi Levin Zetzal. But um, one thing that I, um, I, w one thing that I am able to do is just to share some, um, some insights that I that I myself witnessed uh, when he actually came to Shari Tzion on Lag Bomer, which is a few months ago, um, and because. I had the privilege of meeting him. That was my first time meeting him when he came to Shari Tzion. And then, so his face was very clear, uh, very um, recognizable to me. And um, um, together with the rest of, I think, the, the Jewish world, we were in shock when we heard the news this past Motsu Shabbos. Um, we, were, we were getting ready for the fast. It was after Shabbos. We was the already Shabbat Shabbat Amuz. And um we got the news that uh that uh something had happened really it was very very sudden then at the at the funeral the refrain that was going around was keep which is really that the middle of the day the sun was was set um uh Rav Levin was a uh, relatively young man he was not sick, and uh, therefore his patira, um, in a certain sense, is harder because he wasn't. It wasn't like something that was expected, very sudden. Um, and we spoke. We spoke about that at the Levi as well. I'll just give you a little bit of a background. Um, like I said, I, I, I don't. I did not have the privilege of learning by him personally, but just from a little bit that I read about his life and his history. So uh, he was the, the Shiva of Tel Zeshiva, and um, this was, um, he actually became, he was appointed Roshiva uh, when his, his own father passed away, his own father, Avram Chaim Levin, passed away four years ago. So he was only a Roshiva for four years, and he was 63 years old when he passed away, his past month's um, Before his father, passed away when his father was the yeshiva, so he was at the yeshiva in Tel Tells, Chicago, and he was the yeshiva's first year magic chair. I mean, these are boys who just finished Beis Medrash, uh, who just finished high school and are going to Beis Medrash for the first year. And um, he was extremely involved in the different age groups throughout the yeshiva, and when his father passed away, as I mentioned, four years ago, so he took over the, the leadership role in the yeshiva, and he was Delivering the highest she were a um, couple of um, things that the Tamidi mentioned about him. I'm just reading right now, and as I'm speaking to you, reading as well, is that he used to give two shiurim in the morning and one for the first year Tamidim, people who are not so advanced, but just right out of high school, and then one for the more mature, sophisticated Bachram or on a higher level. And it was very difficult to do because you had to say, not only in terms of time, but in terms of the preparation for two different shiurim. And it was very hard for him. It was a bit much simpler to just combine the shiurim together. And, you know, the kids who couldn't get it, the, the boys who were not on the level, they'd have to work a little bit harder. But he felt, no, 
I won't do that. It's not the best thing for the students. The best thing for them is to have two separate shiurim, um, not any higher, not any lower than. Now, the truth is, I was really refrain that was heard at his levayo by all the speakers because he treated, there was no difference between family members and students. Um, his son, one of the speakers, <clears throat> there, were, there were two levayas, one in Chicago where he was, as Yeshiva tells, and then before the Aaron was flown to Aristotle, they made a stop over in, in, in Lakewood um, by Peter So in, uh, in Yeshiva tells a couple of uh, the Maspidim, uh, we can you can you can check that out. The the uh, them are on, are on uh, Blitzer anytime. You can check it out. Check them out there. Some of them are in, are in, in Yiddish, but you can make out more or less what's being said. Um, the, the refrain, the thing that was mentioned, is that there was no difference between students and <clears throat> and biological children. Um, his son was speaking, said that sometimes he would call his father. He would call his father. And his father said, "I have to get off the phone right now. So, uh, Tama needs me." Like. It was like he was, you know, this is talking to his own son. He said, I'm, I have to go. There's a talent that needs me right now. So there was a, a feeling that <clears throat> it wasn't just a student, but it was it was part of his, his you know, part of, part of his, his actual family. Um, just one, one beautiful uh, vart that was said by this was, his son also, Rabbi Prime Mordechai, said this, uh, said this thought, which is that um, we say that the Gemara Barachos tells us that Rabbi Kiva, when he was about to be killed, taken out to be killed, martyred Al Kiddush Hashem, and the Romans were combing his flesh, gruesome, torturous death. He was, and um, he began to say Shema Yisrael, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Alkina, Hashem Echad. Talmidim stopped him, and the Gemara says, it tells us more in Barachos that Samach Samach Aleph. On the base, if anyone wants to look it up, 61b. Mar says there, as he was saying Shema, one of his Talmudim said, Rebbe, Ad Khan, you have to go so far. Because as he was saying Shema, he said, Kabul, o, o Shemaim, he's about to pass away. And he turned to his students and he said, We say Shema, we say Shema, which means that you have to serve God's even with your, your nefesh, even with your, your entire soul, up until the very last moment. Son pointed out, Rafael Mordechai's son pointed out that here we have Rabbi, Rabbi Kiva. Rabbi Kiva is on the verge of death. You imagine what it means to be on the verge of death? A person about to die. You, you're about to meet your creator momentarily. You want to take every single second to get ready. It's not a joke. It's, the end is here. The game is up. It's time for you to get ready to say your vidoy, to, 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 to give a din, to give a din in front of your, your, your creator. You, a normal person, we, he wouldn't even bother with this student. We, I don't have time for you right now. I'm about to die. I need to get ready to have Hashem. It's the Vidu, Shema Yisrael, I have to block you out. Rabbi Kiva stopped, and he had the composure, had the frame of mind to answer a student. You, you imagine that he stopped. There's a very, very, very beautiful, small the hair that he stopped what he was doing just so his, his, Talmud, his, his Talmud had a question for him, and he stopped what he was doing. He stopped saying Shema, about to pass away. So he could answer his his his, his, his Talmud his student and said, No, 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 that's that's the Pshat in the Pasuk. And the Pasuk says the Nafshika means that even when Kosh Baruch Hu takes your soul, that's what we're saying in behalf of Hashem Kekho, even with your soul up until the very last moment. Within this dialogue, this back and forth between the Talmud and the Rebbe, Rabbi Kibu could have just ignored him. He's not on time for him. I'm just busy. I'm about to die. I'm saying Shemari, I'm saying Vidu. No, that wasn't enough. And even in his last breaths of air when he was for sure, for sure, was in, involved in very, very holy, holy in Yonim. He was, it was totally, it was about giving over. This thought was very, was a, uh, was a theme throughout, um, throughout Ravari, throughout uh, Roshul Levin's life. That he, he used to, there's a, there's an Efesha Chaim, Rukhan Lajan says that a person wasn't created for themselves, they're created for other people. That's why I made you a person. You, you, you were made for yourself. You were made for other people. He 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 lived that idea, that ideal, which so many of us strive to do. He actually lived it. He lived that ideal, and it was something that he would just give of himself and give and give. The, they say over a beautiful word. It's also I said at the at, at the Levaya in Yiddish. I said, I'm reading it now on um, Shpacha magazine. It's said over in English that um, 
he asked him something. This is, he spoke at the. This is a um, uh, Rav spoke at a a Guru convention. He was called to speak on the Guru in, the, in uh, of the Midwest, and he asked he asked the question: What is the definition of a good Rebbe, good teacher? What's a good Rebbe? What's how do you how do you qualify a good Rebbe? And he said, we say in Birchas Torah every morning, So when we're saying we and our children, our children, our children's children, and the children of Amcha Beis Yisrael should all be colonial de Shemecha, we all should be knowledgeable of the Baruch they should learn your Torah for it's it's the right reasonings. So a good Rebbe says is thinks about his Talmudim when he's saying the word my offspring. He doesn't put the Talmudim in the other in the other category of and no the other other people of Kaisra. Talmudim should be included in his offspring. That's when he's a person is saying with me which means our offspring with Tetsuwe our offspring, he should look at the Talmud as an extension of himself. And that's really was something that he that he embodied, that he really, really lived to that that message. Um, a couple other mice that are brought here that um, he had a pack schedule, he was involved in not only was he involved in the needs of the cloud of, of the Tzibur, but he was also uh, he made time for his own aliyah as well, his own personal growth, which is very, very tricky as you get older. You know the the uh, as a message to the Torah life. You know, when I mean, you're you're younger, you have much more time to devote your own growth as you get older. And Bez Hashem, you'll see, you'll have responsibilities, family, parnasa, and other other old, you know, other olim responsibilities and burdens to speak. Like that you have to, yeah, that's that's part of life. But at the same time, a Jew is never supposed to stop their growth. Whatever you do, always make time for your own aliyah, your own growth. If the person's not growing, you're not going high, you're going lower. Uh, there was a story here, he quotes, this is Amri from Mishpacha. Mishpacha had, has a, brings over here that, that um, Talmud said, I need to speak to you, Rebbe. And he asked for Shmuel Yehuda, can, can we speak? Shmuel Yehuda thought about it, he says, I wish I could. My schedule is just too packed today. I have no time. And there was the inanim of the yeshiva and giving I have no time to talk, to talk today. The boy per- persisted. He said, Rabbi, it's, I really need to talk to you. It's very important. Shmo said, okay, he said, meet me at my house at 10.30 p.m. So the Bacher showed up at his house at 10.30, Tom was recalling, and he spoke as if it was the summertime, Bein Azman, and nothing going on, just like, hey, talking for hours because that's what the Tom needed. Um, <clears throat> and... Um, Another another story here is once upon a time he he appointed a Talmud to uh, write over the shear. This is very very very, very nice uh, very nice kind of a trick to 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 force you to to get the shear clearly. He once appointed a Talmud to say to not only to say the shear but to write the shear down the shear that he gave over and presented to him so he could hold it so it, for later usage maybe he could print it in a safer. Which hopefully the Beis Hashem will will do. At some point, the, 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 the Talmud was appointed to give to to write to transcribe the whole shear to write down the notes of the shear. Said uh, Rabbi, I would love to write over my own chidushim. This is an older older bacher. I mean, it's twenty is the point, but I can't, and uh, because my time is uh, is taken over to give the shear. He's kind of asking him, you know, do I have permission to stop writing over the notes of the shear, and so I can write my own chidushim? So instead of saying yes, he said to him, I give you a bracha. The responded. Says, I give you a bracha that you should have fine time. You have to have 28, 28 hours in, in the day to do it. Do both. Say over your own schidush Torah and also write, write, write over the shears they give you as well. You find the time for both. See, sometime, somehow, some way, busy person does it all. Right? There's an expression you want something done, give it to the busy person. Make time for it. If it's important, you make time for it. So um, I'll share over with you. I'll share over with you some other thing there. This is a Again, we spoke about the idea that um, he was perfect. He was in good health. He wasn't sick at all, and um, it's very sudden. And um, right this past uh, this past Shabbos, had 
Minchatheim, when his colleague, one of the one of the other Menalim in Yeshiva, asked him, he could give a shmuz, said, are you speaking? I shall show this today. He said, I'll try. I'll try. He looked at him, almost like he was hinting that he wasn't someone was gonna, that he was kind of taking leave of them. And um, he actually spoke about this past, uh, this was the last thing he spoke about before he was Nifter, he spoke about how we're in a time period now of Midas Adin. During three weeks, it's time of Midas Adin. It's a, it's a strict time right now. It's not a, it's not a, not a good time in Kalei history. But he said that um, this is, uh, at the end, even though there are Midas Adin, Hashem is giving us a patch, and it's, it's, it's time of when, uh, when there's, the justice is being made out right now. But at the end of, at the, end of the day, Midas Adin brings about Good to Zachin. It brings about good things. It brings about Yeshua. So it brings about more more limit of Torah, and it brings about Rebbei Kavod Shemayim. Very interesting. He throughout the Shmuz on the Shal Shuris this past uh, Shabbos, the last Shmuz that he spoke to to the the, the Yeshiva tells Chicago, he cried throughout the Shmuz. I understood why he was crying. It's not characteristic of him to cry, especially Shabbos. You don't cry in public. Well, he was crying. It's almost like his neshama knew. The, 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 the Zohar says. Personal Shama knows 40 days before they're about to leave the world. Kind of like he knew he was taking leave of them. Um, I'll just share with you something that the um that the current tells of Shiva said over, um, which is that uh Ben Yona, Ben Yona says in Sharbaz, Ben Yona tells us that uh a person has one of the ways to inspire a person to to do tshuva, and now this is definitely is a time, a time period of tshuva from now on to Rosh Hashanah, especially after in in, in this in, in, in light of it being a time of Midas Adin, one of the ways to inspire us to do tshuva, many others says in the second gauge, uh, this is um, Shar Beis Ostezvav, he says that a um, person needs to think, right now, a person needs to think that he doesn't know what time he's going to be called Someone to the base of Shemayim, and he should wait every every moment. He should try to be mechadish that lahoshi rucho betahara alakim asher nasana get himself ready to go to baruchu vechapes the rochav, and he should do a cheshbon nefesh because he never knows what will be. And Gemara um, in he uh, quotes the word Shabbos. It says shuv yom echad l'chlim misascha. We have to repent one day before we pass away. Rabbi Rabbi Eliezer said as Tamim said, we don't know when that, that's going to be. So says, you're right, yeah, absolutely, you have to do tshuva today, because you, you don't know when, when you're going to pass away. It's precisely what what, what took place. And then Ruben Yuna quotes a marshal, a parable that illustrates this point. That uh, It's his Medrash Kahelis that says, it's a marshal. What is this idea that a person has to be ready? Be called ace, and at all times you have to get ready, because who knows what's going to happen. So there's a Medrash Rabbo that Ruben Yuna quotes, it's marshal, it's like a wife of a sailor. Sailor goes away, and um, he's far away at sea. And Shahisim miskashetes v'tosim befuchenev v'bailo oyber orachos yomim. She would uh, kind of put on makeup and make herself look beautiful while her husband was away at sea. Her husband's not around, so her shchenos people then her neighbors asked her, well, "What are you doing? Your husband's not around. He, he's not coming back for a long, long time. Why are you making yourself beautiful?" So she said, hello, Bailey. Bailey that's, what, that's what the neighbors would ask her, like, what are you doing? So she says, Amr's lahen, Bailey Malach, my husband is a sailor, and it depends upon the weather. We don't know what's going It could be a little bit long time, but you never know. It could be Ulai, perhaps. It could be that the sea, the wind will change direction. And he'll come, maybe they'll have, you know, they, they don't have motorboats then. They'll have, uh, the wind will come, and it'll come very fast. And he'll come back. And he'll find me. And I want to make myself beautiful. I want to make myself ready for when my husband comes back. I have to look attractive for my husband. I have to put on makeup. I have to put myself ready for him. So that's that's the measure. The nimshol that Rabbi Yon is bringing is that similarly, Elkutz Baruch may come at any second. We all hope and pray that we have a long, fulfilling, and prosperous life where we will have many, many years of, of fulfillment and of of, of, of Baruch Hashem. We have no, there's no guarantees in life, and we have to come, we have to get ourselves ready at, at every moment that we have to find ourselves the, the, the possibility by, by, by doing tshuva, having my some uh, uh, learning. And the, the, the Tel Shiva mentioned that 
that um, Shmuel Yehuda was the person not only was in his not only in his um, in his learning, but in his midas taivas, which is something just from just from seeing him come to Shari Sion a couple of months back by Lab Omer, how very edul, very refined, and uh, all that that comes through the Torah, it comes through working on himself and davening. Davening is the midos, it's the chesed, it's concerned for the people, the package, the package of shleimus. I'll just end off with something that that uh, that I, I I believe was the manahal of the yeshiva. I'm trying to think, I, I don't recall his name right now, the manahal of the yeshiva. Uh, his name is Rav Moshe Schmelzer. And uh, Rav Moshe Schmelzer said this over at, at the live, the second speaker. Said that um, by Bria by Bria Adam by Adam Arishon, the Sefer Ikrim one of the Rishonim says that every every creation when it was made, because Baruch wrote in Torah, Vayitov, he made uh, he made this Vayitov, he made this Vayitov, he made this Vayitov, he made this Vayitov. Everything that the Hashem made a creation was Tov. All of a sudden. Hashem created Adam on the sixth day. There's no Vayitov. What's going on? Adam isn't Tov. Sefer Ekrim says something so important, which is the which is the assault here, that a person, yes, we're happy when a person is born, but the mark of a person isn't necessarily his potential. It's what he does. Person is it's not good until the potential is actualized, until it comes into actualization, right? Just because a person has a lot of potential doesn't mean that it's good. Good, when it comes to human being, there is so much potential there, will be actualized. When it's actualized, when we see it actually come true, and there's a fulfillment of it, that's when it's told. You can only really be told, says the Sefer Ikrim, when a person passes away, and we see what did the person do with his life? Did he did he actually do something? Did he, did he waste his life, or did he do something? Did, did, did he leave his mark on the world? Did, did he have a legacy of, of, of good, of of Torah, of Chesed, of, of helping? Well, how was his how was his behavior? Did, was he was he at the end of the day? Did he live a life of Kiddush Hashem? That's when we say Tov. We don't say Tov when the person was was created because we don't know what's going to be with the person. Yes, it's, we're happy. There's a lot of potential, but at the end of the day, the potential is not what makes a person good. It's what they actually end up doing with it. And the idea is that could be that if he. Taka was taken at a very young age, so to speak. 63 is, is relatively, is, 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 he was in the prime of his life. He was, you know, healthy and active. But the fact that he, by he told, we could say about a person, we could say that, look at what he accomplished in his 63 years. Look at, you know, look at the, look at the chesed, look at the Torah, look at the serious nefesh that he did for the cloud and his, his care and concern, his, his midos and the dogma that is there. I highly encourage People to take a look at uh, some of the. Uh, if you take a look at Torah anytime, there are a couple of uh, shmuzim up there that that uh, you could you could see, and just to read a little bit about him, and uh, from the little bit that I that I witnessed when he came to Shartzion, um, I also sent to Yaakov Tzion, I sent the pictures as well. Take a look at them there. Uh, you know, oh, this is also this is one other just one of the last point too. That day when he came to Shartzion, he had just come back from Eretz Just came back from Eretz Anyone knows you're flying. You're flying 12, 13 hours. Why are you making it a stop off in the yeshiva? Just go, like, it's time to go home. You're tired. You just got off the plane. No, I have to come to the yeshiva because there are boys that I need chizuk. There. there are boys that I can help. There are, it's always, what can I, I can do more. I can do more. I'm not enough. I can always put in more. I can give more, more koyach, more effort. He just, he just got off the plane. He was flying on a plane for 12 hours. It's all, so no, go rest. No, I have to do more. I have to. That's something we could all take very we could we could all we could all take that, that message. There's always more that we could do. We shouldn't say I'm done or enough. We could always do more. I wanna I wanna leave that that message with you that's Yihizikhu Baruch there of um of memory of Shmuel Yud Levin that uh Zechatak if you take a look at his pictures online, you see the Edel kite on his face. It was Dripping of Torah, dripping of Yerushalayim, and of of good skites comes from comes from Amul Torah, working on one's one's midos and and just refinement. We should we should also we should follow in his footsteps and use all of our kachos to the max as well.
Uh, Prager, thank you so much for that amazing speech. It was really inspiring. Really inspiring, Rabbi. You really inspired me personally. Inspired all of us. Thank you so much for that tutorial. It was really, really amazing for the support of the Mishma, our Rav Ashmol Yehuda Levin. Again, Rabbi, thank you so much for, uh, for coming and giving us this chizuk for all of us. Um, and yeah, so there was the pictures as well. So there was the pictures. I mean, maybe, share, maybe share with them also the uh, the audio. The audio. Yeah. He spoke to us for about five minutes or so, which uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know who it was, but Rabbi Shimon was sent me the send me oh. the, the, the audio recording. No problem, no problem, Rabbi. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rabbi. Um, also, with that, we forgot to mention uh, for, to mention this uh, sure event is also for Shema Esther Baduba. And without further ado, um, our dear viewers would like to present our next speaker, Daniel Yusubov. Please be on the pen. Thank you. Daniel, please look up. Wow, it feels amazing, honestly. I'll tell you guys right now. It feels amazing being here um, for quite some long time. I'll say a month already. We've been not doing sheer, so I'm really happy that Jacob Zillan came out, call, uh, called me and said, Daniel, you know what? Let's do a sheer. Let's do a sheer in memory of uh, Shua Yehuda Levine. And I was shocked. That I, sh I was shocked whenever I heard that he was, he passed away. I was shocked myself. I said, "How can that be?" So, so I just wanted to say, I just want to touch upon what Rebbe said about chizuk. So, like you know, like what Rebbe said, he said that Rebbe Shmuel Yudah Levine, he came all the way from Israel, two hour flight, right? I go to Miami every year almost, and I'm still tired after a two hour flight. Imagine a twelve hour flight. That'd be crazy. So twelve hour flight and going to yeshiva, you'll be like, I don't know, you're first, you're first, you'll first be jealous, and second, you'll be like, I don't know, I'm tired, I won't go to sleep. So that's that. So I know how how it feels uh, to go to yeshiva right after you get, get off the plane. That's a lot of tremendous siyat that the that already had. So I just want to touch on one thing that. Whenever a person, like you see flyers, right? You see, like, for example, Torah and Info, like they're making a share to me, right? Make a share of Shmuel Yudalibi, right? And they see it and, and they're interested. Do they want to come? Do they want to get chizuk? Do they not want to get chizuk? I don't know if they have, if, they have, if I want to get chizuk. 9.30, too late. Come on. No, no, Mike, you make it early. No, I have to do this, this, and this. Too many excuses. You can find, you can find the whole book with uh, that excuse. So, but what, is, what does it come down to? Even if someone pulls a flag, even if someone does a shoe on the spot, a person has to get chizuk. It could be without chizuk, it could be with chizuk. It doesn't matter. A person every single day has to get chizuk. Why do we learn two alakot a day? Why? To boost our day. To at least get two alakot. Even though we're going to be busy, busy today, we're going to either be working or we're going to either be helping our uh, mother to clean or whatever it is, we're going to be helping our wives to clean. Anything, it's, we're, we're busy. We're, sometimes we're busy. So you know what Hashem said? Okay, two alakot. Just to start off your day, just to give an extra boost, just two alakot. Muftach ben olam and you get you get uh, all I'm about just with two alachot. See, that's that's where chizu. You already take that to your honor, say two two alachot, and you get all I'm about. Wow, that's that's a good, great deal. I'd rather do it. I'd rather stay an extra five minutes in shul than rush out and go to and try to catch the express bus to 47th Street. Rather wait two more minutes just to hear uh, two alachot and you get muftar uh, ben all I'm about. You get all I'm about. So what do we see here? Just a short message. We see here that we have to have chizuk and we have to have chizuk in us. And once we have chizuk, we can start off our day with gishmak. As everyone says, gishmak to be a yid. Why? Why is it gishmak to be a yid? Because we're different from everyone else. When, when we stand at our Sinai and everyone was there, the whole nation, all nations were there. Hashem said, Ani Hashem I went to everyone else and they all said no, but I went to you and they didn't say no. And, we, and you guys didn't say no. So what do we see from here? We always have to stick to the Torah. We always have to be close to the Torah. And once we're close to the Torah, we will end up being moved. 
we will be in Olam Abba, B'zat Hashem, in Olam Aminu. Amen. Thank you, guys. Daniel Yisrael, thank you so much for that amazing, amazing speech that you, have, that you share with us. Really got inspired for the Nishma of our dear, dear Tzadik, Tamir Chacham. Daniel Yisrael, thanks so much again for joining. Uh, and guys, and Refuah Shlema, Esra Yes, do not forget Refuah Shlema, Esra Badluma, also this uh, e uh, event. Um, we'd like to again thank everybody for coming. Um, our next speaker, let's say a small fast by Torah, inspirational, will be Eliron Davido. Please back up. Let's go. Hello? Yes, uh, where are you? Um, the, and this week's posture talks about many, covers many topics about many things, about uh, Avera that Cosby and um, Co uh, Cosby and Zimri did, uh, many more things. So um, I want to specifically um, talk about one uh, specific thing about uh, the Musaf offering, the sacrifices of Musaf. Um, that's at the end of the Parsha of Pinchas. So what exactly does Musaf mean? The, the translation of Musaf is additional, right? We add a Musaf. When, do we, when, when is there additional, which is Musaf? It's on Shabbat, Yom Tov, and Rosh Chodesh. So, but on Musaf and Shabbat, there are only two lamps, right? So there's one, the, there's for Rosh Chodesh, there's for Yom Tov and Shabbat. But on Shabbat, there's one question. Why is there two lamps on Shabbat? The, but, right? Because those, those are the only korbanot of Musaf on Shabbat. Um, so there's many explanations. I'm going to give some. And so when we when we sing on Shabbat, Mizmor Shir, Le'olma Shabbat, right? So Mizmor Shir means, um, what does Mizmor and Shir mean? They both mean song, right? So it's a double name. So that's one reason why we only have two korbanot, which are two lambs of Musaf. So uh, there's an, a second explanation is whoever uh, transgresses Hashem's commandments um, and they are double condemned, right? So that's a second explanation. And so the enjoyment is double on Shabbat because um, it says um, that you, it says in Yahashua, I think that uh, the Shabbat, you should call the Shabbat a delight and a holy day. So it's two different things and it's double enjoyment. And the fourth explanation is when we do uh, the brachot for the bread, when we do the brachot for bread, there's two There's two halot. So that's a fourth explanation. The last explanation is because when on Shabbat, we have two things. We balance through the spiritual and the physical. So we have to balance both of these things uh, by serving Hashem, learning Torah, etc. But also, we should rest our bodies. Thank you very much. Eliron, thank you. <clears throat> Eliron, thank you so much for that amazing, amazing speech that you have to share with us. It was amazing. Obviously, it's no shame for it. Thank you, Eliron, so much. It was on the, you know, targeting the parasha. Really, really amazing that you gave us. Now, I would like to begin my, my speech um, for the last part of the event. Thank you again, everybody, so much for coming. Our dear viewers, it means a lot to us. And... I want the speakers again. Thanks so much for coming. Um, so I would like to I prepared a speech. Um, and I really wanted to share with all of the viewers. You know, when the Rav came to our Yeshiva, Yeshiva Sharetzion, I really didn't know as a you know close Rav that I would respect you know too much, too much, a lot, you know, a lot of respect. Because I didn't know the Rav that close. It was all the way from Rosh Hashiva, Rosh Hashiva in Chicago. But this is New York, two different places, you know. So then, but when I came out to, to get a bracha. I right, I right away saw the Kedushana's face. I right away realized who this man really is. Tzadik Yisodola. You know, and the way he was speaking, the way he was thinking, the sure we I personally got really a bit he looked really inspired. And you know what? As my 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 rabbi said on prayer, I said during the share, he said he came from and it's said that day to New York. And actually think about it, we put his shoe on our channel. Now the share is only four minutes and fifteen seconds around there. Four minutes here, four minutes here. Now think about it. He went all the way from Eretz to New York just to give a four-minute shiur to seven and eight grade, six, seven and eight grade boys in a yeshiva in New York. 
He went in to 12 hour flight. He went just to spread four minutes Dvatora. I believe it was in the type of that boner. Four minutes. But it took him 12 hours just to get from place to place. That's that's the Mr. Nefesh that the Rav gave to all Clyde said. And that's the message we need to take upon ourselves every single day. What's the, what's the, what's the message we need to receive every single day from, from this Gadol Ador? That by uh, by us acting or dressing in a way, you know, that can show that can show other people, that can show other Jewish people that we are actually B'nai Torah, right? By us doing that, we are showing how much we love him, how much we love him, and how much more we could do to, to serve Akhlas Baruch in the best way. You know, a person who just dressed up like a gangster outside, you know, that's showing Hashem, Hashem and he's a Jewish person, has shown you know, he's showing Hashem, Hashem, I don't care Hashem about you, I'm dressing up the way I want, you know, what's so bad about being like a guy, you know, that's, that's what some, unfortunately, some Jewish people think, but that's the wrong way, you know, just like the Rav, he came in, he gave me Surah Nefesh, that's, that's the same weekend, if we have, uh, if we want to do Mitzvah, but for that Mitzvah, it takes a very hard time for us to put in the effort to complete that Mitzvah, we should still do it, by us doing it, by us still putting in the effort to do that Mitzvah, but it could be anything to give to the Kah, keep the Vayim, anything it should be, but it's still, if, if it could be hard for you, you still, still try your best to fulfill the Mitzvah, any way possible, even if it's hard for you. Even, even if it's hard for you, and even though if you know, if if you go to do it, and if you try your best to do it, something might happen to you, it doesn't matter. So in that fashion, when a person does a mitzvah, or he's on the path, he's on the way of doing mitzvah, Hashem will guard him, Hashem, you have Shmira around him, you have Malachim around you, and Hashem is guarding you, because, you, because Hashem knows that you're going on the path, that, that you're going on the way to do mitzvah. You're not going to do any other, you don't, you're not going on any path to do an avera. You go on the path of doing mitzvah. You're on a way to do a mitzvah, but it's hard for you. Hashem will guide you and Hashem will give you a shortcut. That's the message we need to get into ourselves. Again, everybody, thanks so much for listening to my speech. Again, I want to thank everybody for coming, our dear viewers and our dear speakers of my prayer. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, uh, Daniel, thanks so much for coming on. El Randavid, thanks so much for your speech. And thank you to all our viewers that came on today and showed the support for Torah and for Hashem. We'll save everyone in the next Torah Info video and the Torah Info event. Thank you.